Hey, how is it going today? It's 4th of uh, August, Sunday. Uh, since it's Sunday, let's take a look at finances, right? <laughs> uh, the where opportunities might be. Uh, that's going to be uh, prefaces this video. That could be a new Labour's government plans to build 1.5 million homes, right? A massive amount of uh, housing needed in the UK. Uh, and here what needs to make it happen right and uh, we can take a look at uh, how to perhaps solve this problem differently compared to how things have been done so that really cost savings that could be offered and or potentially passed down to consumers uh, so if uh, currently people are paying for house uh, input cost. Input would be how much labor required as well as one of the highest when it comes to waste and how much time and all resources have been wasted in this sector as well as energy intensive sector since uh, there might be steel uh, which is heavily energy intensive to produce as well as cement and uh, many other factors to consider when it comes to this sector right? and the current cost of uh, materials, labor, all these kind of things, as well as how, what cost savings can be offered when it comes to building 1.5 million homes, or perhaps using new technologies like uh, 3D printing. It's something that we can take a look at within today's video. Uh, we can try to understand uh, this problem a little bit better first before taking a look at uh, some of the projects and how those projects have been delivered, right? Uh, target uh, so is government seeking to build uh, many millions right uh, starting with 1.5 hopefully we can reach this target and uh, see if we can uh, support government when it comes to solving this problem uh, we can take a look at sustainability uh, so that could be a value proposition so if we take a look at cost sustainability so reduction in need of uh, having many people and all materials are wasted, all these kind of things, right? Let's, uh, I haven't read any of those articles, so let's uh, read it together and try to understand it. Well, we can take a look at this article, something that was published three months ago, and that's the building sector, and perhaps uh, it needs to change the way how things have been done. Uh, I don't know, perhaps myself coming to this, I haven't read anything, so I'm not necessarily agree or disagree. What I'm saying is, perhaps we're going to be taking a look at health and safety, right? So if the houses would be built using new technologies, if it would be safe, and if it would be safe for how long. Some of those houses can be potentially uh, built for 60, 100 years, right? Uh, currently, right? So if we were to take a look at new technology, uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at safety. Not necessarily within this article, not necessarily we're going to be talking about safety, but I, I think safety is be one of the massive concerns, right? Not necessarily just sustainability, which is could be cost savings, right? As well as a uh, better way and all process, right? Uh, overall, in this article, some of the bullet points that we're going to be taking a look at that would be Building continues. Uh, building con contributes seventy percent city emissions due to high carbon materials such as uh, cement and steel. Building sector not geared up for repurposing buildings with the new build uh, cheaper than easier. Right uh, processes. Uh, so perhaps they already working on the new processes. Refurbishing rate needs to increase with only one percent of buildings being improved annually. So it's something that I was taking a look at yesterday, that would be, since there is a housing shortage within the UK, about 1 million of homes currently are not being used. So uh, a government is taking a look at its entire inventory and looking how UK's government can optimize its inventory current houses, as well as perhaps refurbish some of those houses, right? as well as build new houses right so it's important to understand or have full picture coming into this new policies like use energy performance of buildings directive driving shift to the drop fitting ai or and or digital tools offer ability to streamline future fitting and or enhance building performance so we can take a look at the entire article and let's try to understand what this article is all about
This information was published on the uh, 2nd of uh, May. The, uh, uh, I'm not entirely sure if we're gonna read the entire information since uh, they might be offering a lot of examples and all these kind of things, right? What we like to understand it, uh, if uh, it's better ways of uh, perhaps, since uh, as of now uh, in some of the bullet points they were taking a look at how houses can be retrofitted, what optimal would be. Uh, again, I don't know, I would say health and safety would be the most important thing, right? <laughs> so I mean, whichever way they would be building houses. But I thought I would take a look at official statements instead of taking a look at some of the businesses uh, already delivering a lot of projects, right? Not necessarily I'm looking to support any of those businesses, right? I'm looking perhaps in unbiased opinion, but again, I hope it's unbiased opinion, right? Uh, building is responsible for 37% of global emissions and up to 70% of emissions in cities thanks in part to production and no use of high carbon materials such as cement, steel and aluminium. Uh, it's not only <coughs> emissions but uh, that's a big part of it. At the same time, four-fifths of the building that will be uh, standing in 2050 have already been built. So without tackling the emissions from existing buildings, we cannot decarbonize our cities of the wider global economy. Okay, okay, so uh, there might be some agendas being pushed on people as well as there's a lot of laws that currently uh, governments looking to introduce. <coughs> well, we can stop there, I believe we can stop there. <laughs> Because well, many reasons, many reasons. Uh, let's stop there and progress perhaps to the next article, right? <laughs> From all bullet points, a uh, part that I'm most interested in, and we potentially take a look at uh, information that was published by the United States, right? So the United States have their own agenda, right? So that's important to mention. And the way how information has been presented sometimes uh, if I were to read this information someone from Europe it would be completely different compared to if it's uh, information published by someone from US by the way but either way so the part that I'm most interested in in optimizing processes right so that would be potentially using it software solutions and or uh, in this case AI again if uh, Europe has its own AI model I wish it would Otherwise, I'm promoting U.S. companies, right? <laughs> Worth mentioning, right? Uh, but that would be, for example, uh, research have uh, developed 3D printing to reduce construction material input by 70%. 70% seems like a lot of cost savings since it's Sunday and we're taking a look at finances, right? Construction uh, reworks between 2% and 30% of construction expenditure is waste throughout rework companies such as okay okay so we're promoting potentially uh, most likely u.s companies so let's keep that building energy waste mm, perhaps demolition waste so there's a lot of cost savings there but these numbers might be done and all research work might be done by uh, some of the construction companies and they do have their own agenda and they're pushing that agenda but uh, there might be some projects UK based, so perhaps uh, we can take a look at some of those companies uh, who are operating within the UK and see perhaps we can work with some of these companies when it comes to solving uh, government's uh, set targets. So uh, it's kind of a challenge, I would say. <laughs> can we call it a problem? It's a challenge when it comes to housing, right? Let's progress uh, to the next article. Next article is something that was published roughly about a month ago that we comment how AI can help uh, us turn our disposable economy into a circular one. So that would be one of those examples. Circular economy, uh, this future utopia where waste is not waste. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, that potentially could be used as building material. But again, uh, then uh, I'm not promoting any of those projects, right? Well, if anything, I like to highlight once again health and safety. That's important. I don't know what <laughs> they're talking about in this article, right? As entered the business of Lexon, as we recognize the size of the problem we are created in the planet. Every year globally, we dump 2.12 billion tons of waste in the environment, and the astronaut nodding 99% of everything we buy is described within six months. So this is a very unique uh, United States problem, right? That they 
uh, do not uh, making purchase decisions and uh, one use items, all this kind of thing. So it's a very unique US problem again. So the, I believe uh, the, some of those governments are more conscious with their money and where they're spending their money on and how that money should be invested, right? So when Sabin said, let's look at the next article, right? Entire sector might be uh, early, right? And or young sector, since we're taking a look at some of that information that was published in 2022. Uh, 40 uh, or 24 months, right? Uh, some of those projects uh, could be five years old. Some of those projects can be three, or in this case, perhaps two years old, right? But the uh, entire sector might be fascinating. I thought I'll touch on some of those projects uh, just to uh, show that it's impossible to do. And some of those projects have been delivered uh, mostly in the South, right? Uh, South Africa, places like South Africa, Kenya, uh, with, uh, some of those uh, projects can be delivered within uh, US, that would be places like Texas. Well, all these kind of things, right? So, uh, as well as uh, some of these projects have been operating within a number of governments and including Germany and UK. So, I thought I'll touch on this particular one. And uh, perhaps because it's private business, uh, not necessarily we want to bring too much attention to private business, we can touch on some of these projects. Let's take a look at three different projects and uh, what's been done across the world, right? Uh, that is just uh, one of the projects and one uh, of the examples have to be a 22 year old of uh, 3D printing schools. So it's kind of interesting projects, uh, I believe, when it comes to building schools and education, all these kind of areas would be very, very important. And uh, since uh, as many projects would need to test their concept, so then they are testing it, so we need to build something for someone and uh, to see uh, that would be how long uh, some of those buildings would be able to withstand all the elements, all those kind of things, right? So building schools, more, they build more schools, it's always good, right? As well as uh, perhaps learning uh, from home, even better. <laughs> more computers, so people can learn from home, not necessarily they would need to travel, right? So let's take a look at uh, another project, right? Uh, some of those projects are able, that would be 2023, able to build uh, all houses, well that would be Texas, uh, Houston, right? Uh, as well as they were uh, having a lot of problems with homelessness, right? Uh, so I think they built entire areas for people when it comes to housing, addressing some of those issues with very unique issues within a particular area and particularly affordability. So that would be, uh, even in the UK, uh, can 30 year olds purchase a house? Can they? I don't think they can. Uh, perhaps not that many. <laughs> uh, you need to be professional within the area of expertise perhaps for 10 or so years to uh, make above 55,000 a year, I believe, to purchase a house. But it depends area uh, where you would like to live as well as house, how big of the house, how many uh, things to consider, but perhaps affordability and the, that would be another solution to this problem uh, within uh, UK, right? But either way, let's progress uh, to our last project, right? Uh, when it comes to technology, let's finish on this uh, last project. Uh, that would be uh, how robots overall can function. But this project is delivered uh, within California, right? So. But overall technology, uh, let's finalize today's video, taking a look at technology with robotic arms uh, or robots themselves. I'm not entirely sure how robots themselves would be able to balance all these kind of things as well as cost to have those robots operating but arms. Potentially uh, getting better and better every day uh, when it comes to technology as well as they can almost fix everything. So I thought I'll touch on that. When it comes to laying <laughs> necessary uh, parts of the building as well as putting all the building together, that would be one of the most important parts, but it might require a lot of time and a lot of testing, right? In particular, when it comes to health and safety. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.